Hello and welcome to this week's edition of LCAT News. I'm your host, Jen Carlos. While it was another successful 4th of July in East Longmeadow, from the opening of the carnival last Friday evening to the cleanup after Wednesday's parade, on Tuesday afternoon, the LCAT and Rotary Club concert crews dodged rain showers as they set up for Tuesday night's headliners for the fireworks concert, Trailer Trash. By showtime, the sky had cleared and the crowds had started to fill the high school grounds to hear the very popular local band launch into what turned into a three-hour long set. On hand for the opening ceremony was longtime concert goer Betty Rennell, whose husband Russell served as the chaplain of the American Legion Post 293 for many years and who opened countless town events with the Pledge of Allegiance. Russ passed away in June. And I can't say enough about Russ being a World War II veteran. He was in the, all the nursing homes and the VA hospitals whenever any of our veterans were in there. The guy never skipped the beat, never never let, let anything get him behind, and at 92, he was still climbing up and down the stairs getting into the pulse. Then it was on to the concert with the crowd wasting little time getting into the party spirit. At 9.30, concert chairperson Susan Grimaldi made her way onto the stage to make an announcement. I was just able to convince Trailer Trash for an extra half hour performance. Okay, now they're coming to our aid. They're knights in shining armor. There's been this, uh, fire marshal had some issues with the fireworks. It's under control, but it's taking a little bit longer. So we didn't want you sitting around. And that's why I came up and said, can you help us? And what was the... At 10.30, an hour after the planned start time, the first rocket was finally launched over the high school baseball field. The delay was caused by problems cited by the state fire marshal in the way the racks of the launching tubes had been set up by the vendor. We spoke with Ryan Quimby, chairman of the parade committee and a member of the East Longmeadow Rotary Club, which underwrites the cost of the fireworks display. The uh, unfortunate delay of the East Longmeadow fireworks uh, on the 3rd were caused by the state fire marshal inspecting the fireworks and giving the shooters uh, changes that they had to make and the problem that we ran into was when our town inspectors went to follow up the uh, changes had not been made so two hours after the state fire marshal had told them to make the changes the uh, vendor still hadn't made the changes and then uh, when we went back to look we brought some help so we actually had uh, the police department the fire department and some town residents help us uh, make the necessary changes and then later that night they had an issue with the wiring of the fireworks which caused the ultimate one hour delay. Right, the racks, so there's I think about six tubes per rack and then the racks have to be a certain distance apart. The, the distance apart is specific and they were not set up specifically, they were set up very randomly. And uh, that was the spacing that we had to correct. The wiring, unfortunately, we could not help with since none of us seem to have fireworks licenses, at least not this year. Then on Wednesday, the parade kicked off from the high school, thankfully without any delays or emergencies. Special tribute was paid this year to Birchland Ave resident and Pearl Harbor Navy veteran Charlie Lockhart. We would like to introduce a very special person Charlie Lockhart, a World War II veteran. In 1939, when he was 19, he left home to join the Navy. On the morning of December 7, 1941, Charlie was stationed on the USS Curtis, which was struck when the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor. He was just 18 years old. 
He continued to serve throughout World War II in the South Pacific and was honorably discharged from the Navy in 1945. Charlie and his wife Gert moved to East Longmeadow in 1950 where they raised their three daughters. After 40 years of employment at the Uniroyal Tire Company in Chicopee, he retired as first class power engineer. For many years, Charlie has been helping to prepare and serve meals twice a month to the homeless in Springfield with his church group from St. Michael's. And over the years, he's visited several area schools, most recently East Longmeadow High, to talk with students about his experience at Pearl Harbor. Charlie is 95 years old and has lived in East Longmeadow for the past 68 years and never missed the 4th of July parade. He's very happy to be in the parade with four generations from his family. Charlie, his daughters, grandsons, and great-granddaughters, please stand up and give Charlie the biggest round of applause you got. Tribute was also paid to Alex Blaze, a middle school student who passed away in June after a long battle with cancer. Happy 4th, everyone! Nice and hot, right? Right the way we like it. Hey, for all of you that have been around here in the past couple years, you know we had a little uh, addition to our police force, and that was Alex Blaze. We got involved with Team Alex, and rightfully so, but unfortunately we lost him this last June. In memory of his uh, passing, the, his sisters, Natalie and Grace, are going to release some balloons in the air in his honor. Come on over. Go ahead. Thank you all for whoever supported Team Alex. It didn't go unnoticed. This community is a great community, and the Blazes truly appreciate the support you gave them over the past couple of years. Thank you again. Have a happy fourth. Parade Chairman Ryan Quimby says he thinks the parade and the whole 4th of July celebration taken together lived up to people's expectations, even with the fireworks issue. Yeah, we had good weather. Uh, we had a little bit of rain on the 3rd, which wasn't too bad. It kind of cooled everything off just a little bit before everyone started to show up. And then uh, the 4th, the weather was, was nice. It was quite warm. <laughs> A couple of new floats, uh, a couple of local businesses were excited to get their floats in. Uh, well, we were honored with uh, Charlie Lockhart to be in our parade. 95-year-old um, Pearl Harbor survivor, uh, Navy veteran, and hasn't missed a parade in 68 years. They were asking if he could be in the parade, and I said, he can be in every single parade. <laughs> <laughs> Next year is the town's 125th anniversary. Uh, the town was founded on July 1st, 1894. So uh, we're going to try and come up with a lot, of, a lot of events, do the parade a little bigger. Um, the, we already informed the carnival vendor, and hopefully the uh, fireworks company will help us out by uh, making up for this year's uh, mishaps. In other news, the school committee has elected Richard Fichero as its chairman and Gregory Thompson as vice chairman for the 2018-2019 school year. That reorganization took place at a meeting on Monday, July 2nd. A reminder that the Town Council will meet this Tuesday at 6 p.m. in the Media Room at the Council on Aging. On the agenda, Public Works Superintendent Bruce Fenney will discuss the Town's mandate to comply with State Environmental Stormwater Regulations, commonly called MS4. Fenney will discuss the impact on both the environment and the operations of the DPW. LCAT will have more about the MS4 implementation in the coming weeks. Also on Tuesday's agenda, the election of the Town Council President for the upcoming year. With the summer camp up and running, the East Longmeadow Rec Department has announced that swim lessons are starting at Pine Knoll. Classes will be on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays for group lessons. For safety purposes, lessons are capped at 10 swimmers. Lesson times are coordinated between the swimmer and the aquatics director based on pool and instructor availability. For more information and to register, visit the website elrec.recdesk.com. And here's what's happening at the library this upcoming week. On Monday, July 9th from 2 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. is Cactus Creations for Teens and Tweens. Visit the library for a fun and creative painting class where you will transform rocks to resemble cacti. Then paint a pot for them to grow in. Taught by Jenny Voigt, an early childhood educator with a passion for teaching kids to be creative. Also on Monday, July 9th from 5.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. is Pizza and a Movie. 
Come watch A Wrinkle in Time and enjoy pizza and drinks. This movie is rated PG and registration is required. On Tuesday, July 10th from 12.30 p.m. to 2 p.m. is Cafe Concerts, Crosby, Stills, and Nash. Take a lunch break at the library and enjoy a show on the big screen. Light refreshments will be served. This event is sponsored by The Friends. Also on Tuesday, July 10th from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. is Uche's Family Experience. Uche's Family Experience brings a little something for everyone in the family and promises to create an evening you'll never forget. Kids and parents will be captivated, inspired, and entertained by his lighthearted approach to family life and his unique way of embracing everyday challenges. This event is for all ages and registration is required. On Wednesday, July 11th at 6 p.m. is Gardening for Pollinators. Learn how to plan and maintain your gardens to attract birds and butterflies while protecting bees and other pollinators. Answer the question, what do birds and butterflies want? Led by George Kingston, a retired engineer and a master gardener. He is the current president of the East Longmeadow Garden Club and a former president of the Western Massachusetts Master Gardener Association. This event is sponsored by the East Longmeadow Garden Club and registration is required. On Thursday, July 12th from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. is an interactive drumming workshop at 2 p.m. for ages 6 to 11 and at 3 p.m. for ages 12 to 16. Children will see, learn, and play drums, percussion instruments, and unique instruments from around the world. Registration is required. This event is sponsored by the Friends of the ELPL. Finally, also on Thursday, July 12th, from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m., is Spirit of the Drum for Tweens and Teens. Presented by Cliff Madrum, learn to use Native American log drums, percussion instruments, and unique instruments from around the world. Registration is required. Register online or sign up at the library circulation desk. That's it for this week's edition of LCAT News. I'm your host, Jen Carlos. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.